Advanced Functions Practice Exam. This is part four. It was supposed to only be three parts, but I had a power failure, and so I come back here to start on question number 12. We have quite a um, freezing rainstorm going on outside and lost power for a minute, but I'm back. So here we go. Solve for x on the interval indicated. So it's a quadratic, right? Look, squared, single power, constant. So I want to go between minus 2 pi and 2 pi. Make sure you check your interval so you're giving all your all the solutions that are required. So if I factor this, I'm looking for a product of minus 2 and a sum of positive 1. So that gives me 2 times negative 1, right? 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, 2 plus negative 1, negative 1. So this gives me cos of x. Now nope, got to put them over 2 because it's a it's um, a not a simple trinomial. So that gives me cos x, this goes 1 over 1, cos x plus 1. And the other one is 2 cos x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so that tells me that cos x has to be equal to negative 1, or cos x has to be equal to 1 half. So when I do my triangles here, I did this before the power went out. I drew a picture of the cos function between minus 2 pi and pi. So the there's going to be two solutions for negative 1. That's here and here. So this solution is x is equal to plus or minus pi. That gives you those two. And I have four more solutions where cos x equals a half. So cos x equals a half means I have to be in this quadrant here. So cos x of a half is pi over 3. That happens at pi over 3, which is 60 degrees. So I have here and I have here because cos is positive. So if cos is positive, cos is positive in these two quadrants only. So my two solutions are going to be pi over 3. These ones aren't going to count, right? because that's where cos is negative. So pi over 3, and if I go all the way around here, oh, it's really storming out. So this would be 6 pi over 3, right? That's 2 pi. So this minus 1 would be 5 pi over 3. So x is equal to pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3, and also going the other way. So as I go this way, this would be negative pi over 3 and all the way around to here would be negative 5 pi over 3. I could have put those together, couldn't I? Okay, so there you go. Uh, number 2, 1 minus 2 sine 3x equals 0 between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so big warning here, the 3x, right? That's changing the period of the function. So we have to be careful to make sure that we're covering all of the um, we adjust for the 3x. So if I solve this little equation, I would say, well, minus 2 sine 3x is equal to negative 1. So sine 3x is equal to a half. So where is sine 3x equal to a half? Well, 3x would be equal to sine a half is pi over 6. Right? Pi over 6. That's 30 degrees. That's where you get a half. But I want to solve for x between 0 and 2 pi. So let's call this 2 pi here. Now we know that the regular sine function would go like that, right? But I'm dividing this into thirds because it's a horizontal compression of one third. So the period, remember the period is 2 pi over k, so it's going to be 2 pi over 3. So this is going to be 2 pi over 3, this is going to be 4 pi over 3, and this is going to be 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi. So I have all of these little graphs like this. There's my function. And I want to know where is it equal to a half. So with a little colored pencil we have a half 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. So I need 6 solutions for this. So 3x equals pi over 2, so that means x is equal to pi over 18. That's my first, my first spot, right? 
So if you were doing this, if you if this was just sine three x is a half, you'd say pi over six and five pi over six, right? There's two places. That's in the first and the second quadrant. So here and here. So there's your pi over six, there's your five pi over six. That would be if you didn't have the compression. So this is pi over 18 and five pi over 18. So that gives me these first two here, right? This is pi over 18, this is five pi over 18. So the rest of this is easy because all you have to do is add the period to each of these points until you get to two pi. So the period is two pi over three and I wanted an 18s because I'm going to add them to this. So that's the same as 12 pi over 18, right? 12 pi over 18. So I add 12 pi over 18 to this, I would get 13 pi over 18. I add it again, I would get 25 pi over 18. And same thing for this one, I add my 12 pi, so that's going to be uh, 17 pi over 18. And add 12 pi over 18 again is 29 pi over 18. So that's going out here. Now if you added another one by mistake, you would have 37 pi over 18, and that's more than 2 pi. So this is covering between 0 and 2 pi, all of your 2, 4, 6 solutions. Okay, there's your answer right there. Okay, number 13, um, which you all love to see, it is I, an identity. So we have 1 minus cos 2x over sine 2x equals tan x. So I'm going to prove it all to be tan x because uh, someone mentioned to me that their teacher wouldn't allow them to touch the other side. So let's try that. It's not, it's just one more step. So left side is 1 minus cos 2x over sine 2x. Now what can we replace um, sine 2x? You should know. I'm going to do it in lots of steps here so you see. So sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. 2 sine x cos x. Okay, so I know that in the end, <clears throat> if I'm going to get to tan x, I'm going to have to have a sine x up here and a cos x down here. So I want to keep this one here, but I want to change this so that this numerator here, so I can somehow divide out a 2 sine x. <clears throat> so cos 2x, we can replace that with 1 minus 2 sine squared x. <clears throat> Sorry about my throat this morning. Okay, now be careful with this minus sign. Again, that's where, where trouble happens. So I have 1 minus 1 plus sine Sorry, 2 sine, 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Let's, let's have that. That's a mistake. Minus 2 sine squared x. So the 1 minus 1s are going to disappear. <clears throat> Running out of room again. So this is gone, and I have 2 sine squared x. This is looking really good, isn't it? Over 2 sine x cos x. And the twos cancel, and one sine x cancels with one of these, and I have sine x over cos x, which is tan x. <clears throat> so you should here also write out the right side was tan x, left side equals right side, and you have proven your little identity. <coughs> That's cold season, isn't it? Anybody else out there have a cold? Oh my goodness, we're in the last question. In the year 2000, the average price of new condominium in City A was 120000 and was increasing at 6% per year. <clears throat> okay, you can read the rest of that, and I'm going to tell you now what we want to do is we want to write two equations, and we're going to set them equal to each other because we want to know when they're going to be the same. So City A. That's right, city A here. Starts at $120,000. Okay. 
120,000. And we're, we're talking here about um, uh, price. So let's call it price at time t. And now your teacher might want a let statement, might p at t be the price at time t. <clears throat> so 120,000, and it's growing at 6% a year. So that's 1.06 to the power of t. And city B, oh, city Z, sorry. City Z is going to be price at time T is $80,000 times 1.06 to the power of T. Oh, not 1.06, 1.08. And a little. Okay, so you want to know, you want to find the time when these two equations are the same. So you set the equations equal to each other. 1.06 to the t. I'm making all kinds of mistakes. Is 80,000. It's because someone came in my room. Look at that. This hat rod. Slow down. Must have been getting some bagels. I've got hungry people upstairs. Still have company. Okay, so now we've got a little conundrum we need to solve for t. This is a question, I think it was in combination of functions or modeling with functions, very last chapter 9 in your book. Okay, so I'm going to divide this side by 80,000, which means I divide this side by 80,000, and I'm going to divide this by 1.06 to the power of t, and divide this by 1.06 to the power of t. Isn't that cute? So that gets rid of this one, gets rid of this one. And I can simplify this. Let's get rid of all these zeros. And 12 over 8, 12 over 8, both divide by 4. That gives me 3 over 2. Or let's even make it 1.5. Why not? 1.5 equals. Now, because both of these are to the power of t, I can write it like this. 1.06 all to the power of t. And this is where you're going to need to get out your trusted calculator. It's really hard to see the calculators, isn't it? Maybe over here. I think it's a glare. Okay, well, you're just going to have to trust me on this. So I'm going to do um, 1.08. I'm going to divide it by 1.06. And I get a whole bunch of decimals. Now, you're, you're wise to leave that alone when you take the log. Because that's what I'm going to do next. So I want the log of 1.5. Is going to be equal to the log of 1.08 over 1.06 and you know that means you can bring the variable to the front here. Okay so the log of 1.08 I'm going to take the log of this number now log of my answer and I get a really little baby decimal and now I'm going to take the log of 1.5 Where's my camera here? So I'm going to do the log of 1.5 and I'm going to divide it by my answer. So second answer and I get 21.69. So t is approximately equal to 21.7. So the question though, make sure you're answering the question that was given. If these trends continue in what year will a new condominium cost the same in both cities? When will they cost the same? In 21.7 years, so that would be in the 22nd year after the year. Therefore, the same in 2022. Right? You can't say, well, you could say in the 2021 in the month of the next month, seven months later. 21.7 years. So by 2022, they will be the same. Or in the, maybe I'd say in the 2021, what's 0 0.7 of a year? What month? You could get really accurate. I think I would probably say 2021, um, 0.7 of a year. What's that 0 0.7 of 12? Let's get really cr cr fancy here. That's, oops, 7.7. .7. Times 12 
is eight. Eighth month is August. So we could say August of 2021. And if you want, you could even find what day it is. 0.4 of a month. Okay, so my dear followers, that brings us to the end of the exam, the end of the course. And um, yeah, that was a lot of work for me. I hope you've appreciated it. I hope you've subscribed. That's all that really counts to me is that I have followers, I have, that I'm helping people. Love your comments. And I wish you all the best on your final exam. And uh, I'm really happy to be sharing my love for math and all my little tricks with you. Happy 2020.